Ready to do this? Yep. But I don't think my brain is ready for this. Eh, we'll do the best we can with it. This is uh, basically a summary of some of the things I've learned, paid attention to, thought about over the last week. Uh, today is Friday the 13th. Ooh. November uh, the 13th, 2020. Yeah, it's the second. It's the second Friday the thirteenth this year, according to someone close to us. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> we're gonna go over some of these things, um, and you know, basically one of the things that I want this channel to be about going forward for a while, uh, it's gonna be a lot about the Pi Network social app. So, if you want to join the network, uh, I'm gonna have a bunch of videos on the channel about it. You can look at those. If you uh, look it up, download it, it's really quick to join. Uh, my username on it is Converge20, so C-O-N-V-E-R-G-E-20, so you can use that as an invitation code, and um, yeah, you can learn about it here. So, all right, so there are a few things that I wanted to uh, mention. I'm just going to go through it in the order that I came across them over the last week, and the first idea here is that so there are so bitcoin is significant on the scale of the discovery or invention of something like the fire or like fire or the wheel uh, as far as its importance and significance to humanity so there are some things that we interact with and it's like you know they they shape us mentally they say they shape us socially um and i wrote here just a brief look into my mind brings these technologies that have enabled paradigm shifts in the human experience and so i kind of think of them like um experiential wonders of humanity kind of like you have the wonders of the world right but you can have wonders of things that have had an impact on humanity so um one of them is the discovery of fire like that changed the way that humans you know interact with food with you know the different elements that are on the planet with the world in large with you know our digestive system like fire has such a huge impact on us the way that you know we can harness it for heating you know for light so you know when the sun goes down pretty much we can make our own tiny sun in front of us like that is a it's a huge invention we can use it to chase away animals so our you know ability to almost tame fire is is a huge is a huge invention is a huge discovery it's a huge mental leap for humanity when it happens so you know i you could go through a thought experiment like you know just imagine you know being cold at night you know not knowing you know it's be it's dark so you're hearing all these noises in the woods and you don't know what they are it's just like it's it's an ex it can be a, a pretty terrifying experience and so you know trying to get some rest in that situation it's probably not gonna happen so I could see the situation where I would actually sleep during the day and be awake at night <laughs> even though that's not how we're developed so we're gonna be kind of at a disadvantage but at least we're awake we can like defend ourselves but you're just not gonna get snatched up in your sleep you know but I guess if you're in a community then you can have people developed that look up. or trained what, what do you mean developed or trained well, you're saying that's how we're developed. Well, we it's, can it's train your body to. We've been developed that way, I say, because of the because of the way that our eyes work. Our eyes, we don't have a really good night vision for our eyes. So I say, I say, developed because if we developed to have, you know, to to do more at night, then we would have. Then my thought is we would have better night vision. So my idea is that we we didn't spend a lot of our time like cats. doing things exactly. Cats, bears, a lot of animals have really great night vision. Owls, 
they, it's pretty much daytime to them when it's dark out because they can like absorb so much light into their eyes but we well, didn't we didn't develop that way clarify yeah, that so so there's that and so i guess you know it, we're we're social animals so we live in groups you know we have families and so we can depend on other people in the group to kind of stay awake and watch our back while the rest of us rest in peace so we're not like hyper vigilant you know all the time but fire you know amplifies our power it amplifies our abilities at nighttime because now we can pretty much take the daytime with us you know we can take the heat with us and so it's a, it's a really powerful invention um so that's that's fire the wheel is also another like amazing invention i mean being able to carry something heavy around and just roll it on a wheel is just like that's a marvelous creation you know so people always say like you know you don't need to reinvent the wheel like the wheel was invented once leave it alone we're still using it like in so many different ways in our lives today you know it doesn't need to be invented reinvented where we modify it we do different things with it you know but it's still the same circular shape you know it's it's a it's the way that it affects our minds like it has it has an ecosystem that has developed from it just like fire fire has an ecosystem you don't just see fire applied in one way you see it in the kitchen you see it in metallurgy you see it in you know computer science you see it you know in the candle that's in the room right now you know like you know just aromatherapy so fire has uh an ecosystem that it lives in just like wheels there's an ecosystem for the wheel right um the printing press is also another you know significant development for humanity as far as i see it so you know you can go through your knowledge of the printing press and its ramifications on humanity um so there's that you can also think about electricity so we've been familiar with electricity with lightning strikes and stuff but the harnessing of electricity to do work it's like bottling fire that's that's a, a paradigm shift you know how often do we use electricity now and that just changes the way that humans interact with our environment all these things change the way that we interact with each other either extremely significantly or they change the way that we interact with our environment the invention of the internet again someone described the internet as humanity developing a nervous system uh, Elon Musk I believe is the one that that I first heard that from and it makes complete sense because basically what's happening here with me right now I can set up and put in an, in an environment where the entire planet has access to it and that has not been possible you know in human history before to the scale and degree and you know inexpensiveness that it is pos it is possible now so every human you know is a source of media development every human is a megaphone that can you know express their thoughts to the rest of humanity that is huge and that is enabled by the strength of the internet so there's there's all those things and there's probably more right those are just some things i could come up with really quickly but bitcoin is on that level when bitcoin was published even though its, its ramifications are still being felt you know 12 years later but i would argue that you know how long ago was fire invented or discovered you know how long ago was the wheel invented or discovered the invention of bitcoin is going to continue to have ramifications and reverberations throughout history going forward period okay because it's a it's a paradigm shift in the way that we interact with with proof with proving something so we don't need a third party to prove that something you know is what it is like that can be done through um through a, a decentralized system to, to put it you know shortly so that is one of the ideas that's expressed in bitcoin so i mean i don't know am i like getting too like fancy with my words here well think about it okay if i have if i have money you know i have some gold bars i don't want to walk around with my gold bars so i give it to the bank the banker gives me uh, a piece of paper saying that i have this amount of gold bars in the bank so 
you know, I don't have to walk around with these heavy gold bars anymore. But then I want to buy something from you. I bring those papers to you. I give you some of those papers to prove that I have gold in the bank. And so you can take those pieces of paper now and go to the bank and get the gold out of the bank if you want to. But again, it's easier for you to carry around the paper as well. So instead of going to the bank, you can just use that, you know, to exchange for whatever you want, good or service you want as well. So when you have that system, the banker is considered to be a counterparty. Okay. The banker is considered to be a counterparty in that system. You and I are doing the transaction, but we need the bank as a counterparty to, as an intermediary for the transaction that we're doing. And so there's this idea called counterparty risk, where if something goes wrong with that banker, then you and I are going to be in a, in a tough situation with Bitcoin. There is no counterparty risk. Okay. That's, that's one of the ideas why Bitcoin is so powerful. Okay there's no counterparty risk and so it's it's direct interaction with whoever you're dealing with and there's there's no one that can like say you can or you can't do it so so that's that's you know a little bit of of bitcoin and you know why it is and you can you know i would suggest you look up michael saylor and uh you know listen to the hours and hours of podcast uh, information that he's put out there because it has information and value that will completely revolutionize how you think about money and gold and the the monetary system and monetary history and monetary theology like it just it's completely mind-blowing so I would say look him up actually go to hope.com <laughs> go to hope.com it's a it's a it's a website that he bought many years ago and he's using that website as basically uh ground zero for you know um just disseminating information that he's expressed on bitcoin so go to hope.com if you want to find out more about that um so yeah i would call these six technologies wonders of the pale blue dot we collectively call home like you know ideological wonders of our pale blue dot um like i said if you have any others you know put them in the chat below um and uh let me know what you're thinking and remember to you know like this video and subscribe to it as well you know everybody else is saying that so yeah i'll say it too <laughs> um all right so this is gonna be about you know pi and bitcoin and cryptocurrency but it's also about my thoughts in a general sense <laughs> and one of the things i came across in my mind i'm trying to i i do a lot with swimming and i was thinking about how to teach freestyle swimming more methodically and i try to break it down into actually a few different steps so the steps that i came up with were um reach roll where you like reach and you like I know I'm gonna cover a whole bunch of things. It's, I'm not gonna spend too long on this. So you reach forward and you roll your body, uh, and then you catch the water. Then you pull yourself through the water, finish your stroke, and then recover. So basically, if you're swimming, these are the different aspects of the stroke. You're going to be breathing uh, to the side that you're recovering at. You know, when you're recovering, this is for freestyle, and that's something I thought about. So. I'm going to, you know, tell that to people who are interested in learning about more swimming when I'm interacting with them going forward. So there it is chronicled for anybody that wants to, you know, make a note of that. The next thing I learned about, I, I was thinking about was um, just the general systems that seem to exist today. So there's this gentleman neil howe he wrote a book called the fourth turning and it's basically a look at historical changes that happen in certain cycles on uh in developed countries in the world um so basically we're in the process of a fourth turning now this is something that he's seen coming you know for the last 20 years um 
he he's seen it coming so we're we're in the midst of it and this is pretty much a time when the majority of the people on the planet do not trust the large scale institutions that have been set up to keep social structure and so you know what am i talking about i'm talking about the church you know uh number one i'm talking about government you know just mistrust of government mistrust of you know for me like look i'm a teacher <laughs> and anybody uh, anybody that's out there that knows me well you know you can come talk to me but like the educational system is busted okay like i i teach and I, what the hell are we teaching these kids <laughs> um so yeah you know if you want to teach them about finance then yeah i want to you know i try to incorporate some of that stuff i try to incorporate some of the computer science into my classes you know teach them like art art is extremely valuable it's not just it's not just you know stem they call it steam now science technology engineering art and math we've got to have the heart in there but we've got to have the humanities like all of these things are extremely important as far as areas of study but how, how do you not have finance in there like people spend their whole lives working for money like how are we gonna you know f steam <laughs> i don't know like you gotta have finance in there you gotta have monetary policy in there you gotta have you know history is just a history of money make it history like if you look at history history is just a trail of what's been happening with money what money has done on our planet okay and so the educational system just seems to push us to a point where we just don't care like like it pushes me to a point like i love learning i'm the biggest nerd i look i'm uh i'm a self-described or self-prescribed i don't know what the word you want to call it is but um i learn through my ears and i learn while my either large or small motor muscles are going so those two simultaneously and a lot of times that's like expressed as dance you know because you have the music going and you have your body moving at the same time one of the things i've learned to do i really enjoy video games and sometimes they're mundane video games these days i play hearthstone um battleground so you might actually be seeing this video you know as the soundtrack <laughs> to a hearthstone battleground battle or you know something that i've played or it might be like a drive i don't know which one i'm gonna be putting this uh soundtrack up to yet but the idea is a lot of times the sound that we're hearing the soundtrack that we're hearing doesn't necessarily have to do with the pictures that we're seeing and so i play video games i i enjoy the video game i enjoy the mental stimulation of the video game but i also don't need to hear you know the nonsense that's going on in the background you know that the video game is producing and so i put on podcasts in the background so i'm paying attention i'm fully alert right i'm my attention is engaged because i'm playing the game but that keeps me on such high you know alert levels that i pay extremely close attention to whatever i'm listening to in, in the podcast as well so I, I do that for reading books get through books really quickly get through classes really quickly so pro tip for any of you out there who are like you know you have a lot of content that you need to go through get some kind of tedious repetitive game that you might enjoy like a farming game you know whatever and then put something on in the background that you need to you know be doing your research on so if it's a book that you're reading get the audiobook put that on you can get through that audiobook like in no time <laughs> in that situation and it makes it you know pretty enjoyable so there you go that's a pro tip for you um but anyway like the educational system just sets it up so that like we don't enjoy what we're doing and and i love learning i i love learning i'm the biggest nerd you know like if people ask me what my hobby is i say that learning is my hobby like that's one of the like i might not have said that when i was in school yes i have other hobbies as well but you know what give me some free time and i'm sitting around i'm gonna find a way to learn something new about something that i'm interested in or just you know explore and see if i could discover something new to be interested in like i i i just i love the process of learning i i love that kind of growth you know i love when i have like a eureka moment and there are some things like that and so pi the pi network app is something that i've come across like that recently 
that I feel like is a paradigm shift because it stands to to do something that the cryptocurrency community has been trying to do for a really long time. Um, basically, the goal of cryptocurrency is to have mass adoption, right? The, a lot of people in cryptocurrency want cryptocurrencies to be adopted on a global scale. And so, you know, if you're gonna do that with Bitcoin, then you're gonna need to get some money in order to acquire some Bitcoin, or you're gonna need to get a mining rig, which is gonna cost you some money, so that you're gonna need to have electricity. This, that, and the third, or a decent amount of electricity. So a lot of these cryptocurrencies, in order to get in, you're gonna need to have some other resources to like, you know, to give in order to get started with them. And you know, that's understandable, but not everybody starts off with resources. So what, the cryptocurrencies do to get started they have a launch and so you can have a fair or an unfair launch and so if a cryptocurrency bitcoin had a fair launch it was open to everybody the white paper was disseminated on the internet and then anybody could use the code download the a node for bitcoin and start mining right away they could start you know adding strength to the network and start mining and that is basically what's happening with pi right now but the way that they're rolling out Pi, if you look at the white paper that's on this channel as well, um, it's happening in three phases. So phase one was just the distribution of the information about Pi. Phase two is when they're actually building out a lot of the structures that are going to be present on the network. They're building out some of the apps, the way that the apps are going to interact, the way that they're going to interact with third parties. So that's what's being built out right now. And then phase three is when they go to what's called the main net. And that is when you'll actually be able to transfer Pi from, you know, one person to another in exchange for goods or services. So right now, Pi is being disseminated to the community. But it's a fair launch because anybody can get it. Anybody can do it. And you don't need to have you know certain prior resources or certain prior connections you know with this or that venture capitalist in order to do that and i've been telling people about it but some people take things for granted just because it seems like they're given to them like i remember when bitcoin was less than you know a dollar i remember when bitcoin was two dollars i remember when bitcoin was 35 dollars and i neglected it a lot of those times and right now people are trying to get in one bitcoin is sixteen thousand dollars like Sometimes you, you miss the boat and yes, it's going to go a lot higher, but you know, I feel like it's, it's not going to be the thing that gets us to mass adoption. That is like, you know, gold. <laughs> I mean, the rarest of gold, the where the rarest of digital gold, right? That's what Bitcoin is. And so you're going to need to be on some kind of elite level, even to have one Bitcoin in the future that you know they're saying like you're going to need to be on some kind of elite level in order to even have one bitcoin but pi if you get in now it can be the tool that pretty much greases the economic engines on a global scale i believe that this you know idea of universal basic income is something that all humans on a global scale should have access to like you should have some kind of minimum income you know on a on a daily basis on a on a on a monthly basis that allows you to get goods and services you know even if you're not doing anything and yes you can work more you can you know put in more time and energy to get more out of it but you don't necessarily have to do that and i feel like pi is the only thing that i've seen so far that has the possibility to do that on a global scale and so one of the they just had a coinvention recently and one of the questions that they placed towards the end of that coinvention was you know what kind of relationships should pi have with developers you know going forward and I, I i've been thinking about that question and the way that my mind works a lot of times a question comes in it goes to my subconscious gets chewed on gets digested and then it comes back up with you know different solutions so maybe this is something i could do another uh talk on in and of itself but i'm going to touch on it briefly here because some of the things i've come up with 
are like, um, you know, I there's this other cryptocurrency, it's called Tezos. So I think that Pi should work with Tezos to get something going. I, I, I think that they're both great and I think that they would do like really well to benefit from each other. So, you know, maybe Pi can, um, you know, build out some apps on the Tezos network or, you know, the way that they're interacting with each other. The same thing with Chainlink, like they're going to need to be, you know, working with Chainlink to express um, value, get valuable information from, you know, different third parties. So that's that's one thing. But one of the major, major, major ideas I had here is that the different countries around the world that want to support some kind of universal basic income can have their currency, you know, deposited into an account. And then that account is going to be the the asset that backs up the value of pi so basically um they're gonna back up the value of pi with the currency deposited into this account and that's going to be distributed as value on a regular basis to everyone in the pi network and so you know that's one way that um the the value of the coin can be established in conjunction with you know the exchange and you know how it's just you know the 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 velocity of money that's developed from it but i feel like you know there are going to be million definitely mil millions but more than likely billions of people that are going to be using this cryptocurrency going forward and th this is one way to milk a lot of value and usage out of uh the pi network so uh, these are some companies that I think, you know, Pi should look into uh, partnering with and um, exactly how that partnership is going to work. Like I could think about things, you know, I'll, I'll you know, if you want me to do a, a talk, a, a, a basically just a deep think on some of these different types of interactions, let me know and I could put that out. But Brave, if you don't have, um, if you're not using the Brave browser, to browse the internet i highly recommend you start doing that because you actually earn a cryptocurrency from doing that as well the basic attention token so that's something that i think pi should be interacting with and like combining with tezos is another one and um yeah so those are some of the companies i think the pi network should be uh interacting with and combining with so this idea that i'm gonna bring up now is more than likely gonna be pretty controversial because it it hit me that it hit me one of the let me see it was um i don't know wh where did i get this idea from um, okay let me see where i got this idea from it 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 wasn't necessarily put this way but um oh yeah it was a conversation with uh george hotz and um so if you look up george hotz it was an interview with george hotz and why am i forgetting uh, i'm forgetting the, the host of the show's name right now but oh my god anyway look up george hotz it's a really long interview this is like an hour and 53 minutes into the interview again again the reason why i can pay attention to these things for so long is because i was probably you know i was doing something else in conjunction with listening to this maybe not necessarily playing a video game but um doing something else in conjunction with listening to this and so an hour and 53 minutes into this he starts talk he starts talking about the the dollars the american dollar as the federal reserve coin or the fed coin basically putting it in the same category as like bitcoin or litecoin or tezos or something like that but it's the fed coin all right and so it's just a coin issued by the federal government like that's that's what it is it's software okay the the dollars that you're walking around with in your pocket the dollars that you have in your bank, the dollars that you're working for, okay, if you have the privilege of 
like living in the United States, I suppose, the exorbitant privilege of being, you know, the global reserve currency. If you have those things going for you, then you have access natively to the the, the Fed coin. But some something I've come to realize, you know, that was not necessarily mentioned in that interview and I don't know how much flack I'm going to be getting for this, but here it goes. Um, in the ecosystem for cryptocurrency, you have legitimate cryptocurrencies that have, you know, legitimate use cases that that are earning their value, you know, that are earning their value. But then you have some <laughs> and and the cryptocurrency community has collectively come to call these things shit coins <laughs> i just think it's a really comical name and personally it's 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 weird but i think that the fed coin <laughs> the fed coin that we have in our wallets is a shit coin and you know that's gonna be played out like over time that's why you know one bitcoin is worth sixteen thousand shit coins right now so yeah again if you want me to go into more detail on that Maybe I could do a deep dive on that sometime going forward, but that was a realization that I had that, you know, basically the American dollar that, you know, we're all working so hard for it. And look, yours granted too, but here's the thing. I'm not storing my value in dollars, okay? Like, I get my, I get the dollars I get, like, that's, you know, whatever, that's, that's the information system that I'm using at the moment, but I get that and I... I turn it into something else. I do not store value in um, the Federal Reserve coin. Um, so, so there's that. Um, what else? Um, so yeah, Pi is being fair. It's a, there's a fair launch of Pi going on. Um, so there's this one which was an interesting thought that i'm gonna not go into right now because whatever that that's just the thought that i had so um i'll uh, look into that later um so yeah i mentioned the fourth turning um so there are a few ideas that i wrote down here um, one of the ideas here, um, that I'd like to, I guess, mention a, a bit about is the idea of engineering and how people trust engineers. This is one of the ideas that, um, Michael Saylor was talking about on one of the interviews I heard him, um, you know, express this week is that people trust engineers. So when you get in a car and you're driving it around, it was engineered you know to, to interact a certain way even though people die all the times while in cars but still you trust it you trust that it's not gonna just blow up on you every time you start it when you get into an airplane you don't you trust the engineers because you trust that it's not gonna fall out of the sky immediately you know um, you trust engineers every time you pick up a computer you pick up a phone you put it to your ear it has a battery in it. it's not just gonna blow up in your face every time you turn on your TV like all these different things have been engineered and we trust the engineers that you know are behind that process you know they're using electricity they're using chemicals they're using like this that and the third that in some situations can be very volatile but we trust the engineers to set it up so that we can interact with it safely and you know mostly healthily I mean like we can argue about or just talk about the you know super intelligent artificial intelligence that's behind the screen that's getting us and our children to do certain things that we might not necessarily want to do but that is a different conversation if you want me to go in on that in the future as well let me know um but yeah by and large we trust engineers and what bitcoin did and what pi is also doing it's basically engineers developing the rails and the grease for our financial system okay that's what's happening here our our monetary system is now being influenced by the engineers okay that's that's what's happening 
so yeah that's you know again something if you want me to go in on it let me know <laughs> this idea uh that i'm coming up to next is it's kind of strange it's you know religious related for any of you people go, that go to church a bunch out there but if you're familiar with the story of the apostle paul how he used to persecute the church um but then one day he saw the light pretty much and he became the most you know vehement and widespread advocate for the church after that point that's pretty much what michael saylor seems to be at this point like he's going around and he's just talking to people left and right and he, he just you can't shut him up but he has some really intelligent ideas he has a you know he's very well read very well researched you know very well healed and he's bringing all that energy all that stored energy to bat for bitcoin at the moment which is huge and so you know they were talking about um, at one point how bitcoin can possibly be a religion and it's like they're talking about basically it uh, as a theology like it changes the way that you look at the world it changes your outlook on things and i i feel like there's a lot that can be said about that so my um assistant and i were actually talking about this thing called the bitcoin church at one point and uh so yeah what do you think about that you know bitcoin as a religion you know bitcoin as a theology bitcoin is a theological outlook on the world you know bitcoin as a way of life i mean like what do you think about that again something you want me to go in on more let me know and uh <laughs> i'll i'll look into that so so savings is uh excess monetary energy and this is something that i heard from john villas uh 39 minutes into that interview so if that's something that you want to look at and i just never thought of savings in that way before like savings is excess monetary energy like you know that that was a pretty cool description for me so i i enjoyed that so i wrote that down um this next one uh, many advancements in human civilization are from engineering breakthroughs but how does that compare to mental breakthroughs so just because you have an engineering breakthrough there might be mental breakthroughs that also happen that spread things and I, and i wonder is that the case because you can have you can have an idea but do you actually need something to happen in the world to disseminate and spread that idea it's it's a question i don't know so what do you think like is is it the more engineering breakthroughs that have like significance and impact on the world or does it need to be you know some kind of you know engineered thing that you know influences the way that the world works so anyway i, I thought um and this last idea is the idea that the current monetary system is poison um the dollar denominated global system that we are currently a part of is poison it's poisoning our potential as a as a globe as a people it's it's just it's it's un completely unhealthy for us on a global scale and so you know you can look at it as like you know being suffocated because of the way that it's being the value is being inflated away you know a hundred years ago you can buy something for a penny and it you know it was actually usable and right now like you walk around and you find you know pennies on the streets because there's just no value you can probably find dollars on the streets there's like no value you go to some countries and you'll find you know a hundred dollars you know a thousand dollars on the street because they have no value and so the monetary system that we're in at the moment is poison it's killing people and it complete it, it needs to be reimagined it needs to be re-engineered and that is the process that's currently happening with these different cryptocurrencies that is the genie that was let out of the bottle with bitcoin and it will not go back into that bo that bottle so that is you know 
one of the ideas that the Pi Network is harnessing for its launch and for its the way that it's going to interact with people on a global scale. So, yeah, you know, those are the ideas I wanted to share. Those are the ideas I came across this week. Um, let me know if you found this mostly monologue type um, communication helpful. And, uh, and that's that. Did you have any questions for me about anything? No, <laughs> shaking your head saying no. So, yeah, that's going to be it for now. Um, I appreciate you guys, you know, that listen to this. And I hope you got some value out of it. Until next time, keep on rethinking.